Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of April 30th through May 6th. Today is Saturday, May 6th. So I am not quite sure when this is going to go up. So this actually might be a cumulative diary entry because I do need to get my vacation vlogs up first. Especially because those are kind of like diary entries where they have some of my thoughts on the books that I have read uh, previous to this. So yeah, not quite sure how many of these I'll need to film before I can actually post it. But for now, we're, we're just going to go week by week and then I'll add them up until I'm able to post another one of these. So it might be a little bit longer um, of an episode this time around, but... We'll eventually get back on track with the weekly uh, diary entries. But anyway, I do have a little bit of a reading update for you. I have a little bit of a knitting update for you. And then um, I'll share with you a little bit of my thoughts on my vacation uh, at the end. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I finished this week um, and I finished two things, um, was Meisan Ikoku Volume 1 by Rumiko Takahashi. This is published by Viz Rated Older Teen. This is a series about a like boarding house. So we're basically following one particular character who is staying in the boarding house because he failed his entrance exams for college. And so he's trying again. He's studying to retake his his college entrance exams and there are a couple of other people that live in this boarding house as well and they do various things but the like caretaker of the boarding house changes and at the beginning of the series this woman here moves in and our main character instantly like falls head over heels in love with her and so we kind of just follow this kind of slice of life type of a story now this is a story that is one that i've been interested in for a very long time way way back when <laughs> i had tried to pick up some of the volumes of the anime um, because i wasn't really into manga reading at the time i was more of an anime watcher and so i had started to pick up the dvds of this series but I didn't pick up very many and I only watched like maybe one or two episodes because I didn't want to not have the rest of it to consume because that's the type of, of reader I am and it's also the type of watcher I am. I, I tend not to like to watch things that are ongoing like especially with ongoing like TV shows if there's a two-parter or whatever I tend not to like to watch them separately and then have to wait in between I will just hold off until all of the parts are out for that particular episode and then watch them through I just prefer that I don't like cliffhangers and I don't like to have to wait which is a large reason why I don't read the volumes that I pick up right away I don't read series until they're almost done because if one of the volumes ends on a cliffhanger, one of the installments ends on a cliffhanger, I'm like basically miserable <laughs> until I can stop thinking about what I had consumed. And it takes a really long time for me anyway. And so, yeah, this has been a series that I've just been really interested in getting into. And it happened to come out of my grill jar for the Aurelia Magical Readathon. So my grill jar is just a empty candle vessel from Otaku Sense that I have little slips of paper inside that have a bunch of the manga series that I have on my shelves that I haven't started yet. And so I was able to incorporate that for one of the prompts um, for my profession for the Aurelia Magical Readathon. And this actually ended up being the last class I needed to take, which, let me refer to my piece of paper here, was for restoration. Um, we were supposed to close our eyes, shuffle, and point at something, but I thought the grill jar would be a better, better way for me to choose something 
And so it's still a blind pick. And so that's what I went with. Anime Sani Koku came out. So this <laughs> was a little bit more comedic than I was expecting it was going to be. I knew that there was going to be a romantic element to this, like throughout. But I wasn't really prepared for all of the comedy aspects. I don't know why I didn't assume there was going to be comedy aspects because in Inuyasha, which is the other Rumiko Takahashi series that I'm familiar with, there are comedic elements to it. But that one's more of a feudal adventure like series. Um, and this is more contemporary, slice of life-ish. But yeah, I wasn't really expecting, I guess, the comedy. I was expecting the romantic stuff. Uh, but this is definitely more comedy than anything at this point. And it wasn't what I was in the mood for at the time. Um, which, again, is something that I struggle with because this was for a class. I had to read this. At this point, I was already like going to be behind on my classes and I didn't want to pick something else out of the jar. I just wanted to bite the bullet and just, you know, read this. So this actually suffered from me not being in the mood to read it. So I ended up only giving this one three stars. And I think if I was actually in the mood to read this, I probably would have given it a four if I'm honest. But because I wasn't in the mood to read this, I'm much more consumed in a different series at the moment. And so reading this out of obligation really hurt my reading experience for this, if you know what I mean. So it's just another testament to the fact that when I am forced to read things, the ratings on it suffer and my reading experience suffers and yeah it's unfortunate because of the Rumiko Takahashi series that I have on my shelves I probably would have preferred to read Mermaid Saga first that's kind of more of the thing that I'm into at the moment as opposed to contemporary um slice of life type series so yeah I have this whole series I definitely want to read it eventually, but I want to read it when I want to read it. I don't want to read it when I'm kind of forced to read it, if you know what I mean. Uh, and so that's why like TBRs and things can't work for me sometimes because there are definite times where I'm in a reading mood like this, where I'm in right now, where are, there are certain things that I want to read. And a lot of times when I have a TBR that I need to stick to, my reading suffers. <laughs> and right now, I feel like I'm finally kind of getting out of that, that like crunch that I was in or slump or whatever you want to call it, where I wasn't enjoying a lot of the things I was reading and audiobooks weren't enjoyable for me and they were really kind of bringing down my reading experience of certain things and I'm kind of like feeling like I'm coming out of that right now and it's unfortunate that this wasn't what I wanted to read because I do want to read this series. I've been wanting to read it for several years if not decades uh, and so yeah I gave it three stars. It was enjoyable. It just wasn't what I was in the mood for. So I did end up finishing all of my classes for the Aurelia Magical Readathon. I just needed another couple days to do so. But I did read that volume. Three stars. Enjoyable. Just not what I was looking for right now. So the other thing that I finished, and I just finished this today. Charm by Tracy Wolf. So this is the fifth book in the Crave series. And I have just been consumed by the series. It's just so enjoyable. So much so that I had my mom pick this one up for me when she went to work today. So this is the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. And the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition does have special end papers, which they are assigned the Dragon Court. 
So these are the dragon um, shields. And uh, there is a little bit of bonus content in this one in the back. Uh, that's exclusive to this edition. And so I'm really looking forward to reading that because I had borrowed the ebook copy from Hoopla because it's not available out through Kindle Unlimited. Uh, but the ebook was available through Hoopla and I also borrowed the audiobook through Hoopla. Now this particular one covers the events that happened between books one and two in the series. So we're only dealing with a couple of the characters that I have been following through the first four books of this series at this time. And I think that's why this one wasn't as enjoyable for me as, say, books three and four. Um, this series has a large entourage of characters and I enjoy watching them all work together and, you know, finding out about their lives and watching relationships form and things like that. And because we don't have them in this one, it wasn't as, like, I would say involved um, because we're only following two characters, they do still go on a journey. There's still adventure. There's still lots of moments where there's high tension and things happening and they're fighting things and creatures. But because we're only dealing with two people as opposed to the whole entourage of characters that are doing that type of thing in the previous uh, volumes... This one was not as good. I still I still gave this one four stars. Um, the audiobook for this one was also duly narrated, whereas the previous four books in the series were only narrated by one narrator, a female narrator, and then there's some like bonus like chapters at the end which were narrated by a male. This book is wholly narrated by two narrators. So we get whole chapters from our main female character and then we get chapters from a male character's perspective and the female character is narrated by a female narrator who had been narrating the previous audiobooks for the rest of the series and then the male narrator is not the male narrator that they were using for the bonus chapters that were in the previous audiobooks. It's a completely new male narrator for this one. And if I'm honest, I prefer the other narrator. So I'm not quite sure why the change. Um, but I also kind of prefer the female's narration of the male character as opposed to the male narrator they have in here for the male character. So, yeah. All in all, it wasn't as enjoyable as the last two books were for me but it was still enjoyable and I'm glad that we got to find out what happened between books one and two and now with the final book coming out at the end of this month I am just like ready to get back to our entourage and go on another final adventure with our whole cast of characters and see how this story ends so yeah four stars still very very good and I've just been obsessed with this series. It's been a very, very long time. This also has beveled edges. And if you know me, I much prefer paperbacks. But I enjoy this series so much that I am willing to get the hardback copies. And not only that, get the exclusive editions. That's how much I enjoy the series. And so I am really, really looking forward to the last one. I have pre-ordered the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, which will have the Dragon Court papers. And I believe it'll have an exclusive um, bonus content featuring one of the Dragon characters. But I'm also getting the Target exclusive edition, which has the Vampire Court papers and the Vampire character extra stuff. And the Walmart edition, which will have the Shadow Court papers. Shadow Realm, and um, exclusive content from the author, I believe. 
The only edition I don't think I'm getting is the Books a Million edition with the Witch. Because I don't have a Books a Million near me. Uh, but I might see if I can order it online. So we shall see. Uh, but that's how much I enjoy this series. That's how much. I will also be owning the audiobooks. Um, because I enjoy the audiobooks as well. Such an enjoyable series. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's been a very, very long time and since I've found a series that has engulfed me like this series has. And I will probably end up rereading the entire thing sometime later this year or maybe next year. This very enjoyable. So I did finish that. And this is not as thick as the other two books that I read. Um, in this series, but this one, I gotta get past the bonus content, has about 500 something pages, 552 pages. So not in the 900s or even 800s, um, like Covet was. <laughs> Court was over 900 pages, Covet was over 800 pages, um, but this was still very enjoyable and yes, really looking forward to Cherish, which will be out at the end of the month. So that's everything that I have finished reading so far. As of right now, I do not have anything else that I am actively reading at the moment. Because May is the month where I like to focus my reading on manga, I do want to pick up a manga volume tonight. So I'm not sure which volume I will be reading yet. I'm still thinking about it. But I definitely want to start reading more manga this month because it's already six days into the month. And I have only read one omnibus volume. And that was a carryover from April. So definitely we'll be picking up some manga this week. And that's everything that I've read. So let's get into some knitting updates with my Muppets bag. So I haven't knit very much. After we came back from vacation, I dealt with several days where my arm um, right here hurt really, really bad. And so I laid off the knitting. I wasn't sure if it was due to the knitting and me, you know, having taken so much time off from knitting and just being tense while I knit. Or if it had something to do with moving all of the luggage and all of that, you know, how that can be. Um, especially when you get back from vacation with very full luggage. So um, I did knit a bit. So the last time I showed you, I think I was here where the Maleficent um, is. So on the end of this pink strip. So I've done this much and I have also put in my heel. This is the Butterfly Heel by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast. I got this one off the uh, Rumple socks pattern that she put out. Now, I know I didn't do this one quite right, but all the seams are connected. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. And uh, so, yeah, it was pretty easy. But being that the yarn is dark, it was kind of hard to see where I was supposed to pick up and stuff. Plus, I had a huge hole here in the corner think I fixed it to the best of my ability so it doesn't look really bad right now um but yeah it's as good as it's going to get so I probably should have put this on a blocker for you but this is where I'm at at the moment which I only have about I don't know 20 more rows or so until I put in the toe so this main yarn is Little Muppets by Moose and You Yarns. Um, this is on their Sturdy Sock Base 75 Superwash Merino 25% Nylon. And so that is what I'm using for my self striping here. And then for the toe and the heel is this dark yarn. This is Onion Nettle Sock Yarn in their black. Um, I really like the onion nettle sock yarn. It's 
got like a heathery look to it. And I've used it for a few sets of heels and toes, especially for my daughter's socks. And so this is the first time I'm using this particular color for my socks. But yes, very happy with that. I probably should have maybe used like a blue for Gonzo. Because I kind of feel like it's Kermit, Miss Piggy, Scooter, or Skeeter. And then I'm not quite sure who the gray is for. But like there was like Gonzo and Rolf. I didn't want to put in brown because I thought it would kind of bring down the the like vibrancy of the colors of the sock. But maybe a, a blue might have looked nice to represent Gonzo. Um, this could also be like Honeydew and Beaker, who are two of my favorites. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy Kermit as well, though. But I'm very happy with this. And we'll see if I have a completed sock to share with you the next time I chat in. But yeah, so far, so good. Uh, the Bakery Bears are doing their summer of stitching that has just started and Kay has released a new pattern for patrons for that. And so I am anxious to get to that as well. I'm kind of all over the place with my knitting and I kind of feel like I just got to go with what's calling me because otherwise I'm just not gonna knit. And so, yeah. At the same time, though, I'm kind of feeling like I want to knit a whole bunch of different things at the same time. So that's not helpful. But yeah, at least I'm wanting to knit now. The want to knit is there. Now, if only my body could follow suit. <laughs> because that pain, man, it was like radiating from my shoulder all the way down to my elbow on this arm, my left arm. And it's like every time I would move, it would hurt. And I know you don't move like your arm a lot when you're knitting. But every time I would knit, it would hurt. So obviously I'm using some kind of muscle in here with whatever I'm doing on my arms. But yeah, that's why I didn't get a finished sock. I thought I'd have a finished sock for you this week. But need to listen to my body when I have pain. So that is that. Work was stressful. I did go back to work on Monday the 1st. It was stressful. My boss took me off. <laughs> and I have come to realize that my heart palpitations are definitely due to work stress or stress in general uh, because I didn't have a palpitation at all while I was on vacation. But we had a very turbulent ride home and I thought we were going to die. And so I had palpitations while we were going through tur turbulence and um, for a while after we landed. Um, but, you know, again, it didn't start again until work. And then I've had palpitations regularly. So I know it's work stress that causes my regular palpitations. Um, and I don't know what to do about that. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's not, not, not a great situation to be in, but I'm glad that I only had to work four days. And so, yeah, no working right now. Um, and then as far as my vacation goes, it was great. Um, customer service, I say, was probably the worst at the Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Just because for me and my experiences, there were a couple times when cast members um, ignored me. Uh, I was looking at some, I guess you would call them luxury bags. Uh, because Disney does carry a line of Dooney and Brooke bags. Um, and they also carry some Vera Bradley bags at the moment. I was looking at them and nobody wanted to help me. They just kept looking at me like I was going to steal them. But they wouldn't ask me if I needed any help. Um, they wouldn't come over. They would just 
like look at me every once in a while with a look that made it seem like they thought I was going to walk out of the store without it with it and so I was very upset I didn't buy any of those luxury bags though I had considered them the entire time I was I was on vacation um, I ended up just purchasing a couple of bags uh, from Loungefly when I came back so yeah uh, customer service at Magic Kingdom and Epcot were probably the worst um, I would say that as far as the bathrooms go at the theme parks Magic Kingdom's toilet paper dispensers were the ones that were uh, set at the right height. Um, the ones at Animal Kingdom and Epcot were kind of like low. Like too low to be able to pull out the paper um, without having it twist up. So that was an experience. <laughs> For when we went, I would say the parks were relatively busy, but there were a couple of times when um, the parks were slow, which was beneficial to us because we were able to get on rides a lot faster. Um, and so I would say that it was probably a good time to go, even though maybe the week after probably would have been better. Like if we had delayed our vacation by a week or a couple weeks, uh, it probably would have been a better time to go. But I think it was still a nice time to go, though it was hot. And if you know me, I don't like hot. <laughs> so yeah, it was like in the high 80s, low 90s the entire time we were there. And even when it was raining, it was hot. Um, and I did get some color. I think you kind of saw it um, when I was doing my videos, but you can kind of see back here, I've got really dark area. You can kind of see on my hand, my hands are really dark. And then where I had my magic band. Um, and obviously it's kind of hard to keep sunscreen on your hand when you're constantly washing and sanitizing. Um, I did wear a mask the entire time because I didn't want to get sick and it benefited me because I didn't get sick and so yeah it was pleasant uh, lots of walking a lot of walking it's the most walking I've done in a very very long time I don't know that I will ever go back um, especially with, you know, the years creeping by and, you know, how your body ends up de degenerating <laughs> as you get older. I don't know how able I will be to go back if I don't go, like, in the next few years. So, yeah, I'm glad we went. My uncle had a good time, though, you know, a lot of walking. He wasn't able to... Uh, do a lot. He was having some leg pain. My mom was in a wheelchair for the first time while we were there. So that was a different experience, um, like a regular manual one. So, yeah, a little bit of a difficult, <laughs> difficult thing. But, you know, it was it was nice to be there. Um all in all, it was a nice experience other than, you know, the bad customer service that I experienced. And yeah, I had a lot of fun. I probably like Disneyland better as opposed to like Magic Kingdom. But things are so spread out as far as the Disney parks go in Florida that it's, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. And so I think that's why I prefer like Disneyland uh, because Disneyland and California Adventure are much closer together and the, uh, the attractions and stuff aren't as far apart either. And so, yeah, I think the chances of me going to a Disney park are probably better if it was Disneyland than if it was Disney World because, yeah, of all the things that I mentioned above. But it was a good time. 
um, lots of different things to try. It, w it was a nice time to go with the Flower and Garden Festival going on, um, especially with the uh, Scentsy um, Flower and Garden collaboration that they were having. That was interesting to experience. And yeah, it was good. So don't think we have any plans for anything else for a while. We are thinking about something at the moment, but I don't know if we're actually going to go through with planning that but yeah it was very nice to be away from work <laughs> especially after the experience I've had being back but it's been okay so now I just have to focus on getting my classes taken for my occupation need to get that done by July and so that's kind of my focus at the moment but I'm glad that my reading has finally kind of come up from the depths I'm enjoying what I've been reading so far though I am a little bit scared now that I'm up to date with the Crave series and not having that next one to jump into that I'm going to like fall back into whatever funk I was in before hopefully that doesn't happen because there are a couple things I do want to read novel wise this month um but we'll see so that's pretty much all of the update I have for you this week. I am going to edit my vacation vlogs and get those up first. Like I said before, I will get these diary entries up. And so I guess that's it for now. I hope you're all having a great week or have had a great week and that you are having some great reads or having some fun. And I will chat with you later. Hi everyone, it is Saturday, May 20th, and I'm here to do a final check-in. So we are going to wrap up this diary entry on this section. <laughs> I did take a week off um, last week because I did read some and I did knit some, but I was so close to finishing a couple things that I just wanted to talk about all together. So I decided to take last week off, and so here we are this week. So I do have a lot of reading to talk to you about. I have quite a bit of knitting um, to share with you, and that's pretty much it. So this diary entry is definitely already going to be on the longer side because I know my first part was already a bit long, but after this week, we're going to get back to normal diary entries every week. So, yeah. Let me tell you what I have read so far since I talked to you last. So, I have finished Reflection. This is A Twisted Tale by Elizabeth Lim. This says, what if Mulan had to travel to the underworld? So, the Twisted Tale series always has some kind of twist. This is my first of the Twisted Tales that I've read. This was a gift to me from my friend Amy at A Star Reads for Christmas. So, thanks Amy for sending this along. This basically follows the story of Mulan starting from when they are doing their final battle with the Huns and Li Shang is injured and on the brink of death. So Mulan basically goes to the underworld to try to pull his spirit back so he doesn't die because he has lots more things to do for China. I listened to the audiobook for this, even though I did have a copy. Um, the audiobook narration was very calm and like soothing. It kind of didn't fit with what was going on in the story, and it gave a different kind of impression of the things that were happening. Like, there were definite parts where there are high tension moments and you know, action scenes and things like that. But the tone of voice of the narrator is just so calm and soothing. And the tone that she uses didn't really evoke those senses of tension. Or even when Mulan got frustrated or angry, it didn't really come across like she was really angry. It gave kind of the feeling like she was like slightly irritated it just it just didn't really work for me 
like I said, the narrator's voice, very calm, very soothing, would definitely have worked for a different type of book. Maybe like a contemporary romance type novel, but not something like this. And I think, again, I'm having a problem because the narration is giving off a different impression of this book than I think I would have gotten if I had read it physically. So I ended up giving this one a 3.5. It was still enjoyable. There were a couple things that I didn't enjoy. Like, obviously there's a bunch of lying because Mulan can't say who she is. But the people that she was lying to, as we get further along in this book, like when she's in the underworld, that didn't make sense to me. Like, how did that even pass? So that didn't make sense to me. I will also tell you that a couple of the names used in this book mean different things to me than what they mean in this book. So, like, Li Shang's family guardian, his name is Shishi. Now, I grew up in Hawaii. We have pidgin English there and lots of mixed culture terms and things. I do not know where this term came from. But growing up, shishi to me means urine. It also can mean to go to the bathroom. But obviously, hearing that name all the time was weird for me. The other thing is there is an older lady in the story. I believe the term used for her means grandmother um it was pronounced lao lao this is not what i used to call my grandmother um my mom's mom who was chinese uh my mom's parents used a dialect of chinese that was very old and is not used anymore and it's why they didn't want to teach me chinese because it's not used anymore and the fact that it was a peasant dialect and so when I heard Lao Lao again growing up in Hawaii even though I could connect that it probably meant something like older woman or grandma to me Lao Lao is a type of a Hawaiian food but it's a very leafy kind of like spinach it's leaves that wrap a piece of meat um i've had it several times in my life it's very very good i always get it when we go back home but again it's a it's a food item so when you when i'm hearing someone being called lao lao that that's what i think of is that food item not grandmother because that's what i grew up with also we the term for grandmother in the dialect that my grandparents used was not the same dialect. So it's not the same term that I would have used for grandmother, even though by the time we were growing up, we only used the Chinese term for great grandmother. And we always just called my grandma, grandma. We never used the Chinese term. So yeah, that was also really weird for me. And so, yeah, I'm sure that's just something that happened because of where I grew up and the terms that I grew up with. It's very a very unique situation, but yeah, it just made things kind of strange for me. I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars. I will need to reread it again in the future because, like I said, I think the audiobook gave me an impression that is different than what I would have gotten if I had read this with my eyes. So I really thought this was interesting. I did enjoy the ride, but there were just a few things that bothered me about this. So yes, anyway, thank you, Amy, for giving me a copy of this book for Christmas. I will definitely reread it. And I did enjoy the ambiance. Um, I enjoy Mulan, the movie, the movie adaptations, plural. And so, yeah, it was still an enjoyable read, just not as good as I was hoping. So 
The whole reason why I didn't want to do a update for you last week was because I was almost finished with a series. So I wanted to talk about all of them together. And so the series that I was almost finished with, I have finished now. And so I finished Living Room Matsunaga-san. This one is by Keiko Iwashita, published by Kodansha Rated Older Teen. So I had read the first three volumes before. So I decided to just continue on. And so I read volumes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So because there's so many volumes, I'm just going to hold up one while I talk to you. So I'll hold up volume four. I'm sure you can tell just by the covers that this is a romance series that follows our two main characters that are depicted on the cover of every volume of the series. So this story basically follows our female character here. Her name is Mika. <laughs> it's Mika. Um, she has a nickname that she goes by, uh, but Mika, her parents have to go away to help um, Mika's grandmother because she is older and needs assistance and things like that. And Mika is almost done with high school. And so instead of making her change schools at the very end of her high school uh, year, they let her stay at a boarding house that is owned by her uncle. And at this boarding house, she's the youngest one there. The rest of the people there are older. And she kind of learns to live alone. Um, she makes friends with all of her boarding house mates and eventually falls in love with one of them. Now, the person she falls in love with is our guy here on the cover, and his name is Matsunaga. And he is kind of like the kind of head honcho of the boarding house. He's the one that everybody goes to to, like, you know, have questions or just chat or vent their problems to or whatever. And Matsunaga-san is 10 years older than Mika. So there's an age gap there. And this series basically follows Mika not only, you know, learning how to live on her own and, you know, take care of herself and all of that, but also navigate her feelings towards Matsunaga-san and then eventually them navigating a relationship. And so I have mixed feelings on this series. I gave all of the volumes four stars. I would give this whole series four stars. I would definitely reread the series. It was very cute. It was only until the last few volumes where I started to have issues with this because for the most part, this series is really cute, pure romance. Even though we have an age gap of 10 years between our two characters, and let me just clarify, Mika's 17, Matsunaga-san is 27. They both age up a year during this series. So by close to the end of the series, Mika turns 18 and Matsunaga-san is 28. I might have to get a little bit spoilery here to explain why I had a few issues with this. I don't think that it should impact anybody's reading enjoyment of this series because... I think you can tell from a series like this, even with just the covers, that this is going to be a romance. The end game of the series is going to be a romance between these two characters. So I just want to put it out there. I might have to talk about specific scenes. In fact, I probably will need to to explain my issues with this. But there's a scene in here where Matsunaga-san is trying to, like... It seems like he's trying to feel out Mika's feelings on him and he basically says that you know in order for him to date someone they need to be 18 years old and graduated from high school and so he he puts that line there which I thought was good 
And then he kind of asks Yomiko what, how she feels about older men. And she basically confirms to him that she, she'd be interested in an older man. And so they kind of confirm their feelings that way. But to me, that's where Matsunaga-san kind of draws the line, right? He tells her exactly what needs to happen in order for them to be together. And even though it's a time away from when Mika turns 18 and she graduates, Mika accepts this. So later on in the series, something happens with Matsunaga-san's career where he ends up having to move out of the boarding house. And before he leaves, he gives her a kiss. It's pretty chaste. It's still on the lips. But it's a kiss nonetheless. And it has romantic feelings attached to it, obviously. And it's at that point that my disappointment started to settle in. Because even though at that point I was still very much rooting for this couple and, you know, watching them have their feelings grow for each other, there was a line. There was a line in the sand. And she hadn't crossed that line yet. And I'm like, just, you know, even though they had, like, gone out on dates together, they were, like, more like outings. They weren't holding hands for the most part. Yeah, he would, you know, buy her a stuffed animal or do want to do a game to win an animal and they go on rides together and things like that. But it was all very age appropriate. It was all very age appropriate and appropriate for their age gap. So I didn't have an issue with that, but I did start having an issue when he crossed that line. And so for a couple of volumes, I was kind of irritated with him. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't like that. You know, why put that boundary there and not follow through? Because then, of course, she just wants to continue like being more romantic with him. And to a point I can kind of understand because she is 17, she does live on her own, she takes care of herself, she has a job. So she's basically, you know, doing adult-ish things without parental supervision or anything like that. But at the same time, she's not yet at the age of consent. I think the age of consent is 18 in Japan, uh, but I'm not sure. But anyway, there was a line. <laughs> there was a line, it got crossed early, and I was upset. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm trying to say. There's also a point in this series where I started to have second lead syndrome. I wanted her to be with this other guy because things that Matsunaga-san was doing just... I didn't like what he was doing. And I was kind of hoping it was going to go in that direction, even though I knew just from the covers that it wouldn't. It made me feel really bad for this other guy. And I typically do have like second lead syndrome where I'm always rooting for somebody else and not the main. But it was kind of like weird because came up during that part where I started to not feel great about what Matsunaga-san did. And I think that impacted how much I wanted her to be with this other guy because of that. But in the end, I did enjoy where this series went. We do get a time skip of like six years, I think. At that point, you know, everything's fine. She's obviously aged up in her 20s he's in his 30s and I don't have a problem with any of that but it was just why why did you draw that line in the sand and then cross it early I don't understand so that point I didn't like but I did like how the story ended I liked a lot of the other characters in this series I felt really bad for that one guy I wanted her to be with you do get to see glimpses into what happens in the other boarding houses uh housemates lives after like say they move out or whatever or even 
in the uh, time jump, you can see where they've gone with their life in the years that they skipped. So I did enjoy the series. I would read it again. Like I said, it was all fine and good until he crossed that line and then I got irritated with him. Uh, but their relationship, like I said, was pretty pure for the most part. Sweet, in fact. And there were times where you kind of forget that Matsunaga-san is 28 because of the way he acts. He really acts young. He reacts to things childishly. And so it does make you kind of forget how old he is. But still, I was irritated with him. So I enjoyed this series. The art style is very, very nice. Very much the type of thing that I go for. I definitely read the series again. Um, and I enjoyed it for the most part. So that's another series finished, which is great. Doing good on that. I read the Monochrome Manga Club series reads. So we read Rainbow Days Volume 1 by Minami Mizuno, published by Viz Rated Older Teen. Um, this is about a group of high school boys who are friends and their romantic escapades. Um, I talk about this more in the Monica Manga Club series First Impressions video, which I just filmed today. So by the time this video goes up, that video should already be out. So I'll link it down in the description box below so you can hear my thoughts on that. I ended up giving this one three stars, I think. And then uh, I read The World After the Fall, Volume 1. This is illustrated by Undead Gamja, original story by Singing Song, adapted by S. Sinan. This one's published by Isai Press Rated Teen. So this is a story where we're following our main character here on the cover named Jaehwan in a world where these towers started to pop up and he's offered the opportunity to become a tower walker and clear these towers of the monsters inside so they don't come out and wreak havoc onto the world. And so we follow him trying to get to the top level of this tower throughout this volume. Um, again, I talk about my thoughts on that one in the Monochrome Manga Club series first impressions video. I ended up giving that one four stars. We also read Erased Volume 4, continuing our series read by Kei Sanbei. This is published by Yam Press Rated Teen. So this is that story about the guy who can revive time and then ends up going back to a time where he is 11 years old to try to fix things that had happened to someone he loves in his present. Um, the story actually finishes up in this volume, but there is one more volume which I believe follows other characters that we have met throughout this series and either what they're doing with their lives after the events of this series or what had happened in the time jump that occurs in this volume. Or is it in this volume or is it in volume three? But there's a time jump that happens somewhere between three and four. It happened somewhere in there. I can't remember for sure. But this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I did have a couple of questions at the end, so I needed to wait till my daughter finished in order to chat with her about it. But all in all, I really enjoyed how the mystery got solved and how it was handled and what had happened to our main character after the fact and the changes that were made because of him basically changing his past. And I thought it was really well done. I enjoyed the little snippets from the mangaka letting us know what had happened in between the publications of each volume and also while the live action adaptation was being done. Um, I thought that was interesting as well. So I'm really looking forward to finishing out this series in June and also watching either one or both of the adaptations because there's a live action drama adaptation and then there's an anime adaptation which I believe is on Netflix. So yes, really, really enjoyed this. I gave this one four stars and I'm glad that I finally read that one. I'm looking forward to completing that series in June. And then we finished Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. So we read volumes 21, 22, and 23. These are all by Koyoharu Gotuge, published by Viz Rated Teen. Um, maybe I should show you the last volume because this story basically follows our main character here, Tanjiro, who, after going to town to sell coal to make money for his family, comes back and finds that his family has been 
obliterated by a demon, uh, but his sister Nezuko seems to still be alive, so he ends up picking her up and trying to go to find help, except the nearest town is very, very far away. And while he is trying to get her there, he realizes that she has turned into a demon. And so he makes it his life's mission to become a demon slayer and try to find the demon that made Nezuko a demon and obliterated his family. Um, Nezuko is special because she retains her ability to not attack humans which is something that most if not all demons in this world aren't able to do like they drink blood to sustain themselves and Nezuko is kind of a rare case so anyway we follow this sibling pair throughout everything that they have to do in order to get to their main objective and so this series was one that I was apprehensive about starting because it has so much hype but it has been a series that I have really really enjoyed the hype is definitely worth it on this one I'm very surprised I don't have an unpopular opinion the last few volumes were full of action lots of fighting lots of heart-wrenching moments Lots of character deaths and just pain. Lots of pain. <laughs> um, I'm not like an emotional reader. I don't usually cry when reading things or even hardly at all ever watching things. This, I didn't really tear up at all. Like I got really sad about some of the characters that got killed off. But my daughter definitely was tearing up. Even when we were kind of just discussing it together before we had gone to the meeting, um, just talking, there were like tears coming down. She wasn't like crying, but she was talking with tears. And yeah, it was just a really well done series. I do feel like it should have been expanded upon some more. Like there could have been several more volumes. I feel a little bit like it was rushed. But I'm really looking forward to more of the anime because lots of the fight scenes that happen in here. I know I've talked about this before, but usually when there's lots of stuff going on in panels, I have a hard time deciphering what's going on in them. And so for me, having that anime to watch later really helps because I can see all of the movement in those battle scenes. And even though I know basically where the end game is, as we go through panel to panel to panel, I really like kind of feel like I miss out when I can't see everything that's intended to be seen in a battle panel. So that's where anime really helps me see that. And I know already just by what's gone on from what I've read that these battle scenes are going to be epic. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what the manga could comes out with next. And I do also have one like manga one shot um, that expands upon some other characters in the series as well as two light novels. So I'll definitely be continuing the series by reading those even though they're outside of like this main story. And yes, I really, really enjoyed it. Gave all three volumes five stars. This series... I think I started giving the volumes like four stars, but I'm going to have to say it's a five star series. I'm going to have to say it. I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad we have it. I'm glad I read it and I'm looking forward to more. So that is everything that I read since I talked to you last. I am currently reading a couple things. So I'm currently listening to Hide by Tracy Clark. This is the first book in the Harriet, oh, I can't ever remember, Harriet Foster thriller series. Um, this is a Kindle first reads, and so I picked it up when it was free, but the audiobook was also only $1.99, so I am currently listening to that book on audio. I am ear reading. I keep forgetting that I'm going to use that term. I am ear reading <laughs> this book. So uh, 
this was for my TBR game. I am on chapter 17. I'm about 31% done. This is a serial killer like investigation. So we follow this woman who at the beginning of this book is just coming back to work after, after being on mental health leave because her previous partner committed suicide. They kind of talk about it briefly, but it kind of makes me think there's another story there that maybe will get expanded upon either later in this book or maybe in a future installment. But it seems like the partner might have had something else that caused them to do that. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. That's not in this book. She's coming back to work after that tragedy and she is paired off with another detective um, i think she's even transferred branches uh, but this partner that she got is a guy her previous partner was a woman this partner that she has is a guy and he's real rude and standoffish and he says sexist things and it's just they don't get off on the right foot at the beginning but they catch a case and they need to go and um, anyway this story basically follows them investigating a serial killer who seems to have a type and I think that's all I'm gonna say at the moment right now they're still finding victims I think second or third victim already um, they just left a crime scene they have interrogated a possible suspect and so yeah it's a lot of that it's a lot of them going to crime scenes interrogating suspects very much my type of police procedural type uh book and i'm really enjoying it and so that's where i am with that i do plan on finishing that in the coming week i don't think that's going to be a problem the audiobook is good i'm enjoying it and I think it's giving the appropriate amount of irritation in uh, our main character's narration uh, with how her partner acts and things like that. And so, yeah, I could do without the partner. I'm kind of hoping she gets partnered up with somebody else because this guy really gets on my nerves. He's on the older side as well, so he's kind of on the old kind of boys club, if you will, and it's just not entertaining to me at all but I do like how our main character is like trying to make sure that her thoughts on how their investigation should go are heard by the new partner and she makes it happen so I'm enjoying that I'm looking forward to seeing how this one wraps up I am also reading Dream Fever, which is the fourth book in the Fever series by Karen Marie Moning. I'm doing this as part of a read-along of the Fever series with my friend Jenea over at Live a Thousand Lives. I am on chapter 18. I'm about 48% in right now. And this one's okay. There are, there are some things in this particular installment that I'm questioning whether the things that have happened are okay i don't know how to say that without being spoilery but it has to do with some possible sexual assault and how that is viewed in the situation that it occurred in and what the remedy for that assault i wouldn't say remedy well it is kind of a remedy because the assault left the character inflicted with something. Now, we're talking about like a supernatural something, not like a STD something. But yeah, there, there are just some things that I'm taking pause with that I'm just not sure that that was even stuff that should have been in the book. And I'm, I don't know how I feel about how it was handled. So that kind of put a damper on things. Plus, all of that stuff kind of just happens at the beginning of the book. Because we're 
following exactly what happened from where the story left in the third book. And if you watched my diary entry on the third book, you know that I didn't enjoy that one very much, at least not as much as the other two. And um, I, I don't know. I'm just... Our main character is very irritated. She's irritated. She's angry at the world at this point because of what has happened to her most recently and kind of feels like she has no allies, uh, feels let down by people she thought were there to protect her, but in her moment of greatest need, they weren't. And that's why what happened to her at the end of book three happened. And now she's feeling like she's being taken advantage of because of her supernatural abilities. And she's just really angry. She's really angry. It's not fun to read. I understand her anger. I can understand why she feels the way she feels about how things were dealt with after she was assaulted. But she's still very angry and it's not a nice feeling to be reading a character that's very angry. And so, yeah. I mean, she's taking care of somebody else at the moment. Um, uh, a teenager. And they they kind of have things in common. But at the same time, this teenager gets up to no good. And thinks that they can do whatever they want. You know, that... Nobody's going to get the best of them and every time somebody gets the best of them and they still are so full of themselves that they are constantly getting into trouble. And that's kind of irritating too. So I'm just like, I'm waiting for all of this to turn around. I'm waiting for our main character to not be so angry with the world, even though I understand why she has anger. But yeah, I'm just feeling kind of meh at this point <laughs> um but i definitely want to see the outcomes of certain things like th throughout this whole series there has been this quest for this book and now at least in the chapter that i just read some questions have has come up about why this book is only able to be sensed by our main character why is it that Every other person who has looked for this book can't seem to find it. Can't seem to even see it from a mile away. <laughs> but not literally, but like can't even like see it. They, they have no idea where it is. But only she has had proximity to it. Only she has seen it. Only she is able to sense it. Why is that? And so she's kind of trying to figure that out or at least it's pricked her curiosity I guess she's starting to think about it now that somebody has actually brought up that fact to her so yeah I'm interested to see what the answers to that are also I am interested to see if she is going to be able to overcome her anger at the two people that she thought were her protectors and ended up not being there for her when she needed them the most and what their full responses on are as to why they weren't they've given her some shallow answers but they haven't given her the full explanation so i'm hoping that we'll get that and so yeah other than that it's a pretty easy read i mean the, the world at this point is being torn apart by unseely and it's basically a matter of survival at this point. It's kind of dystopian in a way the world is right now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm going through this one pretty fast. But yeah, I'm interested to see where that goes. So that's where I am with that. And then I am reading the 14th, I think, 3-in-1 edition of Bleach by Tite Kubo. This has volumes 40, 41, and 42. This is one of my favorite characters here on the cover, Ulki Ora. Um, we're still in Hueco Mundo and dealing with things there. 
I have read volume 40. I just read volume 40 last night. So I'm looking forward to continuing this one tonight. And I'm really enjoying it. And I think that's all there is to say on that. So I think we'll move on to some knitting at this point. I told you I got through some knitting. And so I will start with my uh, Little Muppets. So this is my Muppets bag. This was the sock that I took on vacation with me to Florida. And so I have one finished sock. So I do have a sock blocker here. So let me pop that on for you so you can see it a little better. So this is just a plain uh, stockinette sock. Um, I used Kay Jones's butterfly heel and my lightning toe. And so, yeah, the uh, butterfly heel is kind of, it kind of has the look of a short row heel, but there's, there's no short rows in creating this. So I did 15 rows of two by two rib on a 2.25 millimeter um, magic loop. I did 45 rows of leg, Kay Jones's butterfly heel in um, this onion nettle sock yarn in black. And then I did 50 rows for the foot and then my lightning toe. So I'm very happy with this. It fits my foot fine. Um, I do kind of feel like this heel cap just, I don't know, even though it fits my heel, the way it looks, looks like short. I don't know, I guess because I do a standard like heel flap and gusset, there's more rows for the heel flap. So it makes it look a little bit bigger. I don't know. I mean, it fits fine. It fits fine. It just looks a little shallow. So anyway. I've got this one sock. This colorway is Little Muppets by Moose and You Yarns. Um, it looks like this in the ball. And it did come like this for me, so I did not have to wind it up myself. The onion nettle yarn, I will need to wind that into a ball soon because it's just really floppy. And so I did go ahead and start the second sock. So I have finished the ribbing and now I'm starting the regular stockinette stitch. So you can see already that they do not match. This one starts on orange. This one starts on gray, but that's okay. I don't mind. Um, and yeah, so that is the first thing that I have finished. Let me put this away. The next thing I worked on was my sock from my Hawaii trip last year. And so that's in this dinosaur bag. Um, this bag I got off of a seller on Etsy. I'm not quite sure at the moment what their name is. Um, my other Muppets bag was Otterly Adorable Knits, and I have bought several of their bags. I really enjoy them. And so I actually have another finished sock. So let me pop this on the sock blocker for you. This I did on a 9-inch circular needle. And this also, 15 rows, 2 uh, by 2 rib on a 9 inch circular 2.25 millimeter needle. I did 45 rows in the leg before I started the heel. And you can kind of see the heel is worked by putting in this gusset right here. And then you have the bottom of the foot uh, flap here. This is the rainbow pattern by Michaela Richter. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I've done this one before, um, but yeah, and then I did uh, 50 rows in the foot, and then my lightning toe again. So this colorway is called Diagon Alley. It was by Query Fibers, or Quare, and I bought it when they were on Etsy, but I believe they have a website now if they're still in business. Um, I'm not quite sure. But I've had this yarn in my stash for a really, really long time. It was one of the very first self-striping yarns that I bought. And I made my daughter a pair of socks. And I've been meaning to make my own for a long time and just never did. And so I thought now was the time. Um, 
yes, very, very happy with this. This is a Harry Potter inspired uh, colorway. So you can kind of see house colors in here, but there's kind of like not house colors in there. So I'm not quite sure where the inspiration for those came from, but I really like this. It's really, really colorful and a fun knit, especially because the stripes are so thin. So you get a color change really quickly. And so you can really feel like the speed of the knit, if you know what I mean. Um, this is how much I have left. It's quite a lot. I feel like I'm going to have enough to do like a shorty pair afterwards, maybe. Um, but yeah, seems like there's a lot of yarn left. And then um, the cuffs, heels, and toes was done in this. This is a navy sock yarn from Ice Yarns. So there's 75, 25 uh, sock, simple sock yarn. And so... Yeah, I'm very happy with that. So I have two finished socks, but not a finished pair. So I think I've done pretty well. I have not yet started my second sock for this um, set yet because I started a third sock. So I had no business starting this sock, but <laughs> this is a shark bag also from Otterly Adorable Knits. And I told you that I had finished Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. And so I have been purchasing some anime inspired yarn clubs from Hawaii Bazaar for a while. And I thought now was the time to finally get one done at least. So I had bought Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba in this colorway from her. This was... Um, I'm not even sure what month does it say. It was May 2022. So I thought since we just finished reading the manga, it was about time that I cast this one on. So I wound it up and I purchased it always. Every time I purchase a yarn club, club from Hawaii Bazaar for the anime yarn club, I always get the sock set, so the mini that it came with was this color. So we've got these two colors going on here. And so I have so many things on the needles at this point that I only had one more sock needle to use. And so I have a 9 inch circular needle here. These are Chagu's 2.25 millimeter 9 inch circular needles. and I basically just cast this on so I only have like three yep three rows of ribbing and yeah so I do plan on making a pattern sock I was thinking about doing maybe a broken rib or a blueberry waffle sock or something like that but I had an idea for a pattern that I wanted to try and so that's what I'm going to be doing on this one. So it's going to be an original design. I don't believe that anybody else has had something like this, but it's a relatively simple pattern that I'm thinking of anyway. And so we'll see how this knits up, but it's really, really pretty. All of those like oceanic type colors in there. I'm not a fan of purple, but... I feel like the purples in there go really well with all of those watery colors. And yeah, I am enjoying watching that colorway come to life. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it when I have like more fabric, how that's all going to come together. Um, and I think it's going to be really, really pretty. So my intention is to have the... Uh, coordinating sock uh, mini to be heels and toes only and so yes and again I will be making one set for me and a, another set for my daughter that's why I get the sock set so that there's enough for both of us and so yeah I am running really low on bags also so I ended up putting it in this one and I don't have a demon slayer bag um so, sharks it is. <laughs> um, I believe Summer Sock Camp is coming up very soon. And so maybe I'll 
log those in for something. I think she's taking whips this year though because it's just like a really laid back knit along. And so maybe it'll inspire me to work on those pairs. And who knows, maybe I'll have three new pairs of socks by the end of June. That's really like taking off more than I can chew, I think. But if I can get it done, it'll be very surprising and I'll be very happy with myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I've done since I talked to you last. Um, I still have lots of reading. Uh, next month is going to be pretty manga heavy again. Uh, because of the Manga Pride Readathon, I do try to read as much LGBTQIA plus manga in the month of June as I can. Not only for the readathon, but because it is Pride Month. And the Monica Manga Club selections are also BL and GL selections as far as the first in a series reads go. So, yeah. I think June's going to be a really interesting reading month. I'm obviously looking ahead too quickly because I still have lots of time in this month to finish up a lot more reads. But, yeah. I think I've done really well as far as my reads go. I finished two series so far, and that's great. And, yeah, I'm pretty happy with everything that I've done since I talked to you last. So as far as the upcoming week goes, I have work as usual. I do have a class that I'm taking this week, so that'll take off one of my work days. But not really, because I'll still be, like, on work. But I'll be in a class, so... Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that because it's basically just a lecture for the entire day, which is not really interesting, especially on the topic that I'm getting for my class uh, this week. I do still have to take a couple more classes for my, um, my job uh, that requires it. So I need to make sure I schedule that within the next month or so. But yeah, the first of those classes will be this week. So I'm not looking forward to that. But yeah, it's just got to be done. Got to do some adulting. So <laughs> let me know down in the comments below what you've been up to since I talked to you last. What have you read? Have you found a favorite book of the month yet or not? Um, or let me know what your most disappointing book has been for the month so far. I think that would be really interesting to know. And if nothing else, and you'd just like to let me know that you were here, if you could leave me a blue heart emoji, it's my favorite, down in the comments below, that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out. And that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.